Hello and welcome to this very quick little review of the current, as of the time of this recording, version of Ubuntu Studio, which is Ubuntu Studio 21.04, her suit Hippo. Now, if you want a more in-depth video as to what packages are actually included in this particular distribution, then you're going to need to look at my previous video I did on Ubuntu Studio, which actually is the first look video, where I'm going to be talking about actually what comes installed and how it's configured and everything. This video is the, well, it's supposed to be the halfway lifespan review, but it's a little bit, it's about a month over the halfway lifespan of the distribution, just to see what I've thought of it and how I actually rate this particular iteration of Ubuntu Studio. And in the best way possible, I actually have very little to report. It's been a pretty standard upgrade actually, with just packages being upgraded to the latest version. Nothing overly impressive has changed or been added in particularly. It's just a very, very solid distribution. And some people see that as a bit boring. I know there's been arguments um, in the last few months as to whether Ubuntu has been getting boring with how stable it is. But for me, it's made my life quite easy and has been, been very, very good. Something you might notice that's different from the last video, which I mentioned occasionally and I'm going to stop mentioning at some point, is that um, this isn't actually a KDE Plasma that's running, this is XFCE, uh, because I used the Ubuntu Studio installer to actually convert a Zubuntu, which is Ubuntu with XFCE, into being Ubuntu Studio. One thing I will speak about on that is that we are now using the very, very latest version of XFCE, which is XFCE 4.16. The big, big landmark change with this particular version of XFCE is the fact that it's now basically everything is now GTK3, which is a uh, kind of funny as GNOME 40, which is going to bring with it GTK4, has just become a thing now, so they're going to have to start moving everything over to being GTK4. A very, very little difference I've seen in this. Once again, it's, it's one of those kind of good things. XFC is very, very, very solid. I have been using it now for a couple of years and have had it break on me approximately once. And I think that was just because it was on a bit of a buggy old computer. But with this computer, it's never had a problem. The only thing I would really bring up that is different here is that if I go and go into the logout menu, it's not actually following my icon theme. Now I'm using the Breeze icon theme, the one that comes with the default KDE Plasma, and it used to, on old versions of XFC, put the icons here, but it hasn't now, but these icons look quite nice. I'm not unhappy with that, that's perfectly fine. Something that wasn't so fine though, and something worth uh, actually bringing up, and this is a Ubuntu in general kind of thing, not necessarily a Ubuntu Studio thing, is the graphics PPA. Now I'm running an NVIDIA GPU, specifically a GTX 970, and for quite a while with Ubuntu in particular, you needed to use a very specific proprietary graphics driver. And there were some that came pre-installed, but for the most part I went for the open source Nouveau drivers, which are okay, they're not the best, they're okay. And previously, what you would do to get the latest version of the proprietary drivers is to actually install this PPA here. I actually would not recommend it for Ubuntu 21.04, as both on this computer and on another computer I've had, the driver you get from it seems to have caused trouble. For example, the desktop could no longer completely recognise what the card was, it would render a screen, but if I left it long enough or did anything too intensive, the screen just locked. And interestingly enough, I could see processes going on underneath, but I had like no control over what was going on. I could move the mouse around like the cursor, but I couldn't click on anything. It was very, very peculiar. I had this on two different computers and removing this PPA and actually going back to whatever the de default either Nouveau in one case or proprietary graphics driver comes with this particular version of Ubuntu seemed to fix the problem. So that's one thing to kind of look out for. I'm questioning if I'll really ever be using this PPA again in the future. They seem to have done a better job recently of actually packaging up a good graphics driver with the base Ubuntu install. Now let's talk about the future for a second. So this is Ubuntu Studio's website again, and we have the uh, stable 20.04 LTS release and we have the 21.04. Then a couple of months time, we will be getting 21.10. And so let's have a quick conversation about a piece of software known as Pipewire. Now, Pipewire is an audio backend built to be very, very customizable and very, very much set up for pro audio. Currently in Linux, we have things like Alsa and Pulse Audio and Jack, and they are good for what they are. However, there can be some improvements and Pipewire seems to be a big project that loads of people are getting involved with and seem quite keen in. Uh, from what I can tell, there are some uh, Pipewire packages installed in this current version of Ubuntu Studio, but I don't think they're the main or at least the default sort of audio server yet. 
However, everything I'm hearing seems to be leading towards the fact that this might be taking over from Jack and Pulse Audio sometime soon, and from what people have been trying out of it so far, because I believe it is still beta software, they seem to be quite impressed by it. I know that people who like using Macs for audio tend to argue a lot about, you know, the low latency they get, for example. Or I haven't actually tested Mac versus Linux for audio latency, although that'd be a very interesting video if I could do that. But I imagine if there is a gap, that this would absolutely close the gap. If not, push Linux faster, I would imagine. But yeah, that's about all I've got for this video, I'm afraid. I know it's not been the most interesting of the Ubuntu Studio review videos I've done. However, this is just a very, very stable, very, very rock solid little upgrade to Ubuntu Studio. I'm looking forward very much to seeing what they can do in the next version, which is 21.10. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, sharing and subscribing. And I shall see you again in the next video. Goodbye.